Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and this will be the first and the introductory video of the entire series that I'm going to create for Azure Active Directory and after spending around 15 to 20 minutes on this particular video, you'll come to know what is Azure Active Directory, how it is created and why it is required. For demo, I'm going to show you how you can set up an Office 365 trial tenant with licenses. And then I'm going to talk about a slight difference between how the objects were created in Active Directory and how it is different in Azure Active Directory. Now let's move on in understanding why Azure Active Directory is required. So from this deck, the very first image that you see is a CRM solution that's been offered by Microsoft called Microsoft Dynamics. The second one that you see is a SaaS solution that's been offered by Microsoft, that is Office 365. And the third one that you see is Microsoft Intune, that means it is a Microsoft MDM or MAM solution. But before you can actually provision any of these servers for a particular user, the first thing that you need is username and password. That means you need the identity for a particular user. And that's exactly the purpose of Azure Active Directory. That means what? In a nutshell, every service that Microsoft is offering as a cloud service that requires identity. And it's Azure Active Directory that is providing identity as a service to all of these cloud solutions which Microsoft has. Apart from this, there are n number of applications which are already integrated with Azure Active Directory. So this means what? The moment you create a particular user object, you can provision that user object to access a particular application. As we move on with this particular playlist, I'll showcase you everything when it comes to user, groups, application or how everything works. But for this demo, just understand that if there is any cloud service that is offered by Microsoft that requires identity and it's Azure Active Directory that is providing identity as a service to all these three different components. Whatever I'm saying right now, that will make a lot of sense once I will showcase you that how Azure Active Directory gets created. And for that, as I said before that I'm going to set up a trial tenant of Office 365 and the moment I will log on to portal.azure.com with the same username and password, I'll get the access to Azure Active Directory that is acting as a service for this particular tenant that we are going to create. So without any delay, let's move on and check how we can set up a trial tenant. So for that, what I'll do is I'll switch to my browser and I'm going to search for Office 365 E5 trial tenant. Make sure that you search the same keywords and there is a reason behind that because E5 here indicates that you'll get the licenses that will include almost every service which you can go ahead and test. So it's better to have all the resources with you when you're trying to learn something so that whatever you read or whatever you watch in any of our videos, you should be able to reproduce the same in your environment or in your lab. So I'm going to click on the very first link and I will get redirected to a page wherein I'll get the option to click on free trial. That's all I'm going to do. So I will click on free trial and I will be redirected to a page wherein I will be asked to type my name, my email and my contact number. So I'm just going to type uh, global admin here and I'm going to type my email of a test user account. You can use Gmail, Outlook, whatever you want. And then you have to enter your contact number. In the company name, you can type anything. I'm just going to type test and then I'm going to click on an organization size that means how many people are currently there in your organization now the moment you will click on next you will be redirected to a page wherein you have to select the user details that will be the first object of your directory and that will be the global admin so as you can see now that I'm getting the option to create my username and 
my company name now what do i mean by company name that whatever name you will give here that will get combined with dot on microsoft.com and that domain name or that part will act as a upn suffix for your users by default now this is something which i have covered in detail in the identity model of azure active directory i will be sharing the link of that video in the description but for this deck just assume you are creating a new directory on which we will be working so since the first account that will be created in this directory will be a global admin account i'm typing global here and you can type anything here provided that particular name should be available so we are going to work on azure active directory and then we are going to work on ems and it's a trial as well so what i'll do is i'll name it as aad ems trial and let's see if this name is available or not perfect this name is available and all i have to do now is i have to click on my password and i will just type my password that's it now the moment i will click on create my account i will be redirected to a page wherein i have to type my contact number and get it verified once again so again i'm going to enter my contact number and then i'll click on text me to get it verified i have received the text on my cell phone and i'm just going to type the otp and i'll click on next now this will take a couple of minutes so once the entire process is completed i'll come back and i'll resume the video perfect so uh, the setup is completed now and i'll click on start setup and i will be redirected to my admin page of the tenant which we have just created now this experience that we are getting right now this has been changed recently that means the moment you'll create your tenant you'll be asked to add your domain so that you can proceed further and get everything done when it comes to setting up a hybrid identity model but for this demo since we are covering everything that's more over related to azure active directory i'll just click on exit and continue later that's all i'm going to do so as of now what i have done is i have subscribed for office 365 tenant and what i'll do is i'll go to the license section and then i'll check what all information i'm getting over there so as you can see now that i have office 365 e5 license without audio conferencing that's a SKU which uh, is being named like this and i have 25 licenses out of which one is assigned to my account which got created while this particular tenant was created so if i'll go to users and i'll click on active users you'll find my account getting listed here and by default since this was the first account of this particular directory it has global admin privilege as well now what i'm going to show you is what i have explained in the deck that since i have subscribed for office 365 tenant i'll simply go to portal.azure.com and then i will be redirected to a page where i can access my azure active directory all i have to do now is i have to click on this option which says azure active directory and that's it so now i'm going to show you some similarities on my office 365 portal there is an account named as global admin and if i go back here and i click on user you'll find the same account getting listed here this means what that though i have subscribed for office 365 service but the identity part which is there which is available with azure active directory can be accessed from portal.azure.com even if you go to the license section you will get the same information if i'll click on all products you'll see this there is one unit of this particular license which has been assigned to one of the user however there are 24 available which you can assign now this is how an azure active directory gets created this is one of the example there could be a number of ways to get it created you can use your outlook account to sign into 
portal.azure.com and then you will you can directly create an azure active directory from there as well there is a very specific reason of showing you guys this method because we will be focusing on understanding how every feature works with the valid licenses now let me switch back to my deck and talk about what is the difference between active directory and azure active directory so if we talk about the traditional active directory environment what we used to do is we have to set up a particular server with the server operating system a licensed version and then we were creating active directory by installing active directory domain services and that has a very hierarchical database that means we had domains then we had ous and inside ous we were placing different kind of objects like users computers contacts and groups and n number of things and then what we were doing that when it comes to collaboration we were actually establishing trust between different domains we were creating group policy objects just to keep everything secure now i'm just telling you how objects are defined in these two entities this is not a comparison between active directory and azure active directory azure active directory is not a replacement of active directory whatever i'm going to say right now that will just keep it as a reference point of knowing how things work with azure active directory when we talk about azure active directory there is no hierarchical model that means what all you have to do is you have to go to portal.azure.com to access your azure active directory that is something which i have just showcased you guys that means what there is no concept of organizational unit and there is no trust between domains you can add n number of domains in your azure active directory and all the users from different domains will be synced to azure active directory but the question comes how now for that let's talk about a scenario wherein you have a single forest that means your on-prem environment then you must be using aad connect that's a tool offered by microsoft to sync all your identities to azure active directory or there could be multiple uh, forests that you have on-prem but it is always good to use azure ad connect to sync all the identities to azure active directory but the question comes how exactly everything works now for that let's assume a scenario wherein you have a domain called conceptswork.com and you have a different domain called test.com and both these domains they contain users group and computers but what we have to understand in a nutshell that all these three entities that we see here which are users group and computers these are three different object types now what I have done is I'm setting up AAD Connect server to sync all these objects to Azure Active Directory. But when these objects will sync to Azure Active Directory, the users from different OUs or from different domains will be placed in user container. The groups will be placed in a particular group container and the same goes for devices. There is no hierarchical uh, or chronological order that you can define in Azure Active Directory because if I switch to my portal once again what you see here is if I click on Azure Active Directory you see users and that's it that means from all the domains or from all the forests the users which are getting sync they will be listed here the same goes for groups and the same goes for devices as well that means what Azure Active Directory is so is uh, is a kind of flat namespace architecture wherein you have one container defined for a specific object type. That means all the users from different domains and forests will be available in user option. All the groups will be available in groups option, and the same goes for devices as well. Now, this is more over understanding how objects are created and what is the basic uh, fundamental behind Azure Active Directory. Now, I have a recommendation for you guys and that is please watch this particular video which I'm going to showcase. 
So this is the video which I have already created some time back which lets you know about the exact identity model, how it works with Azure Active Directory and it will give you more insights about why I'm talking about domains and what kind of user objects are there. Once you have completed this particular video, then switch back to our series of Azure Active Directory because in the next video, I'm going to talk about the installation of AAD Connect and how to set up a hybrid environment. So this video was fairly simple wherein we have talked about what is Azure Active Directory, how it is created and how you can set up a trial tenant to proceed with this entire playlist that I'm going to complete very soon. Thank you so much guys. Thanks for your time. If you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any feedback, suggestion or query, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.